Welcome back, everybody. In today's video, we have something very special. A subscriber and viewer says, awesome video. This is in response to my video on whether or not you should go to the graduate school. He says that he has been accepted to not one, but three separate online master's graduate programs. Congratulations to you, Sean. And he seeks our advice on how uh, he should go about choosing which particular program. I do have an answer for you, but first, if you're new to the channel, I am Dr. Phil Tabor. In 2012, I got my PhD in experimental condensed matter physics and probably went to work for Intel Corporation as a back-end dry edge process engineer. I left there in 2015 to become a self-taught data scientist, and here we are. So let's back up for one second and say, how do we apply to graduate schools in general? Uh, you kind of plopped me right in the middle, but I wanna, for others out there that haven't uh, started this process, I wanna give some guidance on how you would choose which schools to apply to. So the first thing to consider is the name brand recognition of the university. You, uh, if given the option, we would all want to graduate from a place like Stanford, Harvard, MIT, you know, all the top name schools. So certainly if you can get into a place like that, absolutely do so. Uh, there's really no downside other than the hyper competitive nature of those places. Uh, but if you get in, then you're probably accustomed to that. You're probably the type of person that would fit right in. Now you also want to apply to places that are, um, varying ranges of probability being accepted. So you want some that are a little bit of a long shot. So higher end uh, state schools with high quality programs in whatever field you're applying in, be that you know data science, artificial intelligence, computer science, as well as some in the middle that you have a strong probability being accepted to, as well as some that you really wouldn't want to be caught dead going to, but you apply to just so you don't end up having to take a job in the fall after failing your graduate school search. So you have a broad spectrum of places to apply to with the idea of maximizing your probability of getting into a graduate program. Now we get plopped right here in the middle where we've already been accepted to some quality programs. And so we have to pick amongst the three. So here is how I would approach this particular question. So behind the quality of the school, the name brand recognition that is, uh, the next question is the advisor. So the advisor is really a linchpin in your education for graduate school. Uh, the advisor will determine whether or not you have a great time or whether or not you have a terrible time. And in particular, what we're looking for is an advisor that uh, has industry connections, has a history of publications, and has a history of getting funding. Now, all of those things are important, in particular the funding, because they have to be able to fund research. Uh, you state that you want to do research, so it's going to be pretty important to have a faculty member that can fund that. They should also have publications because that demonstrates that they can see through projects to the very end. They should also have a team of people working with and for them. That means other researchers in industry, other faculty within the department, as well as students working under them presently. And uh, they should have just a general capability to set you up for success in the future to be able to provide guidance uh, to make connections for you. Say, here's my student, Sean. He's brilliant. Uh, he's done great work for me. Uh, you should uh, consider him for whatever role you have open. So that is the next consideration behind the name brand of the school, which is the name brand of your faculty. Behind that is going to be the uh, program itself. Now, if we take a look at all of these, I'm going to go ahead and check out San Diego Univer University of San Diego. Uh, the next question is uh, the the uh, courses you're going to have to take. Now, looking at this university, uh, these courses all look perfectly fine to me. So you're going to get a broad spectrum of everything that is really important for data science and artificial intelligence. And it all kind of culminates here on the bottom in this capstone project. Now, if you click through on that, uh, it's a practical experience in which students learn how the knowledge and skills they've learned can be applied to real world systems. Now, it doesn't give you a whole lot of information here. You uh, have to kind of use your imagination to figure out what that's going to mean. But the basic idea is you're going to have some semester long project that you're going to have to present your results. And ostensibly, it's going to be related to real world data, real world problems. So that is certainly valuable. Uh, other thing to look at for this particular university is the faculty. So there's only a handful. There's six. Uh, that in and of itself isn't a problem. The one thing that kind of gives me pause here is that the faculty don't have any links to uh, their particular research groups, at least nothing that I can see that I can click through. If you click on learn more about the program, it just goes to request more information. So that's not particularly helpful for someone just browsing the web trying to figure out where to go. Uh, so 
at least from the perspective of someone looking from the outside in, I don't have a whole lot of insight into what this particular university's faculty have going on. Uh, I'm sure they're all competent individuals and have a history of success, but from the perspective of a student wanting to uh, take a program and then be successful themselves, there isn't a whole lot to guide me here in terms of what I can expect once I become a student, uh, what sort of research opportunities will I have, what sort of mentoring opportunities will I have. So that's just something to consider there. It's not to say it's bad, it's just that there's no information there. Other thing to consider is that, I don't know if it says it here, but if we scroll up, it tells you the cost. So $925 per unit, 30 total units, so around $27,000, it's just under 28,000. So not cheap, but not exceptionally expensive for a master's degree. You know, it's only, what, $14,000 a year, about $1,000 a month, it's not too bad. Uh, that's probably affordable. Next thing to take a look at is the Florida Atlantic University. So, uh, spoiler alert, this is my my choice. This is what my gut would tell me is the appropriate choice for me if I were faced with this decision. Uh, this is what I would choose. And uh, in part, the reason is because the uh, course requirements are rather flexible. So, you have um, some core courses that you have to take. Uh, foundational type stuff that is perfectly reasonable. And then you have a whole host of other topics to choose from. You've got vision, analytics, um, knowledge management, reasoning, machine learning, and applications. So you, if you're doing uh, a thesis option, you have to choose, I believe, five of these courses. If you're doing a non-thesis option, you should take seven of those courses. Now, I would certainly recommend doing the thesis option. And the reason being is, um, the thesis is a good simulation of what you can expect in the real world. So for those that don't know, the thesis is basically you're given some research problem uh, guided by a faculty member. He says, hey, we do research in this. There's this open question. How about you take a look at it and present your results? Typically, as a part of that process, you'll publish at least one paper uh, and you'll have to write a thesis as well. And then most importantly, you have to defend that thesis in front of, in this case, a panel of three faculty now. Uh, that is going to be the real linchpin of the experience where you do the research, write at the research, present the research, and defend the research. Now, don't think it's going to be a cakewalk or walk in the park. Those faculty are going to try to tear you down because that's their job. They're not being mean. It's just they want to make sure that you did the appropriate level of due diligence in your work and that you can stand behind your results, that you can present those results. And that is absolutely critical if you no matter what you want to do in your career, you have to be able to present data, present results in a way that is convincing and persuasive. If you can't do that over the course of two years being a master's student, you're going to have a very difficult time doing that in academia, industry, research, uh, really anywhere. So that is a very uh, kind of formative experience in your career as a researcher. I would almost certainly opt for the thesis option. Now, the other metric that I spoke of was faculty and research. Now, they have, uh, this is the list of research centers they have. They have a whole host of research centers in the uh, College of Computer Science and Electrical Engineering. They've got all kinds of stuff across many, many different topics. And uh, if we come up here, if you just look at Browse Faculty, they have again, a whole bunch of faculty, many, there's like, what, almost 20 some faculty or something, I'm not counting, but it's a big list of faculty. Uh, and they look mostly young, so they're probably going to be uh, high energy people with lots of opportunities for students. So that is certainly a positive sign. And the next thing to think about is going back to the research, is what type of research would you do? Uh, so if you take a look at this bid to elect lab over here, uh, the basic idea here is that they do um, biomedical, bioinformatics, health information, as well as, as far as I could tell, uh, re research into real-time bidding for online auctions. So things like Google Ads, Facebook Ads, uh, various other ad platforms that, that are less well-known, but that is a let's say a highly lucrative area of research, something in which you could probably make a career out of all on its own. Other uh, parameter I pointed out is associates. It looks like he's got, what is that, seven people that are affiliated with that lab, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, that look like they do 
uh, a whole variety of different things, like an industry affiliate, a data scientist, an engineer, all kinds of other stuff. He also has three different students. Now, that is a good sign. Three master's students uh, means that he can support a team. He has a team of people working with him, and you're going to have you're going to have peers to work with in your program, as well as visiting associates and then I, uh, visiting associate professors. So all of that is a very positive sign. Uh, this is just one faculty member I looked at <clears throat> at this particular university. I imagine if you went and looked at others, you would see a similar picture of, you know, relatively large research groups, successful research. I also did some more digging on this particular faculty member. He has funding. He has a history of publications. So I get a very good feeling about this particular program. It matches up with all the parameters I find important in a graduate program. Now let's take a look at the other option, the UVA data science. Now this is a little bit different. So this is more similar to the uh, University of San Diego option where you have uh, a whole bunch of courses. These are all chosen for you. Again, they are totally reasonable topics, things you would probably want to know about, things that are going to be very helpful to know about. No real complaints there. All of the curriculum looks totally and completely reasonable. The one downside to this and the reason I wouldn't choose this particular university is because it also uses a capstone project. Now, the capstone project in and of itself isn't a terrible idea. The basic idea is the same where you work on a project in a team and then present the results uh, in some form or fashion, but it's not as formalized as a thesis option. And uh, I don't know if it culminates in a paper. I wasn't able to figure that out, uh, but it does culminate in something you can present. So of course, like a, a GitHub repo, et cetera. So you're going to have something to show for it, but it's not as tangible. It's not as impressive to people with an academic background as a thesis. The other thing that makes me lean away from this particular university, this particular program, excuse me, is it doesn't have, I haven't found anywhere where it talks about the faculty themselves. I mean, I guess if I look here, we've got Daniel, who is a senior researcher. I assume that means he's a faculty. I don't know. Uh, senior researcher, scientist. So I don't know if he's a, uh, yeah, I don't know what he is, but He's got uh, some some good degrees. That's all well and good. I don't see any papers. Uh, I guess we can look on Google Scholar. Oh yeah, so he has a whole host of publications, 2007, 11, 16. Uh, I don't see anything since 2017. Uh, so he hasn't published recently. That's not entirely unusual. Sometimes when you uh, leave academia, it's a little bit harder to get your feet on the ground and start running to do uh, research when you started at a new university. There's so much, so much to be done. So that's not a slight to him. Uh, this is the only example I can find of faculty research. So the links to the faculty research are a little bit anemic, so I can't do any real research there. So now you, Sean, I would say do a little bit more digging than what I have since it's your decision. Uh, but I'm personally leaning towards this Florida Atlantic University. It ticks all the boxes for me. And as far as I can tell, it's also the least expensive. That's something else to consider is the expense of the program. So this particular program is relatively affordable. You know, 27,000 bucks is a good chunk of money, but it's not insurmountable. This one I wasn't able to find for this particular program. Um, but one of the other programs I found was around $25,000. So assuming this is comparable, that is even more affordable. And finally, this particular program, uh, if you, I don't know where it was. I saw it somewhere else, but it boils down to about 20, no, $42,000 is what they said. Uh, so 40 grand is a lot of money for an online degree, uh, particularly one where you don't get a thesis. So I would lean towards the Florida Atlantic University option. And finally, the last thing you want to consider is your gut instinct. Now, if your gut instinct tells you one place over another, I would go with that. Uh, I have seldom been led astray by my gut instincts. Uh, and most people I know that tend to follow them usually end up uh, pretty happy with their decisions. Now, all that said, uh, this is most important for getting your first job. So uh, the only real time you were 
research and degree experience is going to come up really is your first job because that's going to be the only thing you have to speak about, right? And so that's when it's most important. But once you get beyond that first job and your second or third, if you transfer around to different companies, different roles, uh, the conversation is going to center more on what did you do in your previous job role? People aren't so much interested in what you did in your degree because, well, it's not very relevant in terms of how long ago it was, but really there's a pretty big gulf between um, academic research and an industrial product, productive work. So keep that in mind. Um, at the end of the day, uh, if you're not going to a place like Harvard, Stanford, MIT, then it's not that huge of a deal beyond your first job. So there you have it. There's my framework for thinking about how to select a graduate school. Uh, of course, backing up, we have uh, picked the uh, highest pedigree university you possibly can. Uh, during the application process, you want to apply to a broad variety of places, including some that are not places you really want to go, but you would if they had to, if you had to twist your arm. Second uh, biggest point is going to be the uh, research of the faculty member, their level of success, recognition, how well they are liked in industry and in other academic circles, because it is your advisor that's going to be your the driving force behind uh, the opportunities you're presented with during your time as a student. Beyond that, you want to consider the, uh, the coursework. Is it stuff you're going to be really interested in? Uh, and does it offer flexibility? Now, there's a lot to be said for flexibility because it allows you to choose things that are interesting to you, so you'll have more success studying things that are interesting to you, as well as an ability to tailor your education towards your projected and desired career path. Finally, follow your gut instinct. Make sure that what you do is something you feel is going to be a good choice. Uh, if if your gut instinct tells you something opposite to all these others, then go with that. Uh, as I said, once you get beyond your first job, it's really not going to be a huge deal anyway, unless you manage to go to Harvard or Stanford, MIT. Uh, but in general, follow your instincts and you won't be led astray nine times out of 10. That's all I have to say on the topic. I have rambled enough. I hope that was helpful for you, Sean. And I hope that's helpful for anybody else in this particular situation. Uh, make sure to leave a comment with your experience in applying to graduate school, your thought process for picking universities, uh, as well as any questions you may have. Uh, make sure to hit the subscribe and bell icon, and I'll see you in the next video.